So far, we've already learned about linear functions as well as quadratic functions. Today, let's open up our minds to the concept of exponential functions and see what they're all about. So if we take a look at a linear function, its change is always constant. You can expect the difference between one x value at any point to be the same as any other. It will simply be the slope of the equation. So whether you're going from an x of 4 to 5, or you're going from an x of 100 to 101, the change will always be the same. In an exponential function, however, the x value is the exponent itself. An example of an exponential function would be y equals 2 to the exponent x. As you can see, if x is 0, y is 1. If x is 1, y is 2. If x is 2, y is 4, and so on and so forth. Notice how as x increases, the increase in y itself becomes greater and greater. This is one of the key things about exponential functions in that the graph increases at an increasing rate. It's important to look at the equation of a quadratic function and look at the difference between that and our example of an exponential function. Notice how this quadratic function can equal zero simply by making x equal to zero in this example. However, our exponential function can never equal zero. Even if we did two to the exponent of negative 100, we would end up with one over two to the exponent 100, which is a very, very small number, getting very close to zero, but still never actually touching zero since, once again, no matter how small we make the exponent, a negative exponent will simply result in a fraction with the numerator equaling to one. And this right off the bat means that it will not ever equal to zero. We know this because a fraction only equals zero when the numerator is a zero. Good. So we can already see differences between the two functions and it's important that we don't confuse the two. Now before we finish off this video, let's quickly explore a bit more about exponential functions and what they actually look like. Here's an example of a generic exponential function. Now if a is greater than 0 and b was greater than 1, then we can expect the graph to look something like this. If a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 0 but less than 1, then the graph will look something like this. Now, if a is less than 0 and b was greater than 1, then we can expect the graph to look something like this. And finally, if a is less than 0 and b is greater than 0 but less than 1, then the graph will look something like this. Great! So that's it for our introduction to exponential function, and we encourage you to join us in our next lessons. And until next time, have a good one!